Welcome to this Kelloland.com original report. I'm Michael Guerin, joining Kelloland's Bob Mercer at our Capitol News Bureau. He is joining us from the state capitol in Pierre. Bob, how are you today? I'm doing great. Uh, it's a it's a cold day here, but uh, that's the way winter is in South Dakota. Exactly. And, you know, winter marks the start of the legislative session every year. You are uh, kind of raring up to, for a busy session. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it'll start. Uh, the session opens on Tuesday. There will be some legislative committees meeting on Monday ahead of it. Um, it starts at noon on Tuesday. The governor will give her state of the state that uh, afternoon. And then uh, there will be other speeches throughout the week in the afternoons. But uh, committees will crank up right away on Wednesday morning. Well, let's let's talk about uh, some of the bills that have already been pre-filed. Now, uh, my first question about those are, is this common to have several bills already filed before session begins? Absolutely. Um, you know, it's become... Uh, increasingly that way and uh this year there are nine so far or no i'm sorry there are seven so far okay and uh uh so it's that might be fewer than usual but uh but it is common well i want to quickly before we go into the summaries i'm going to show here uh if you are watching on kelloland.com you can open up in another tab here bob has a story this is the capital news bureau page you just go to news and then scroll on the capitol news bureau uh, there's a story here uh, called pre-filed bills include potential for a legislature to hire lawyers rather than sd attorney general and so you can kind of follow along bob's included links in this post so um i think that that would be helpful if you want to if you want to follow along or learn a little bit more beyond what we're discussing so um let's talk about the first one this is uh, hb 1004 and you said this uh, this bill has nothing to do with the current attorney general, but this is the results of a U.S. Supreme Court decision about a redistricting case in Virginia. Can you talk a little bit about what this bill is doing? Yeah, what happened, uh, first of all, this came out of the uh, legislature's executive board um, back in December. And um, what happened in, in the U.S. Supreme Court case was last year, 2019, the U.S. Supreme Court decided that the Virginia House of Delegates did not have standing, did not have uh, legal standing, to appeal to the court in a redistricting case. And uh, and so what has happened is in South Dakota, uh, they've taken that to heart, and Wenzel Cummings, the uh, legislature's code counsel, uh, has recommended that the legislature look at either this option or a narrower uh, version that would deal only with redistricting and the executive board opted for this version. Um, I think you'll see uh, what you'll find is that this is based on some laws in Texas and in Indiana and a few other places. And uh, what it would do is it would let the legislature uh, create by either a joint resolution or I mean a concurrent resolution or by each house, uh, a vote, that a majority vote that would uh, let them go out and hire their own legal counsel rather than rely on the attorney general. And there's several reasons for this. Uh, one, um, you could have a situation where the legislature and the governor are in different positions on an issue. And I'll just use industrial hemp as an example. Um, another issue would be uh, or another situation could be where they're from different parties. You could have uh, one chamber of the legislature controlled by a Republican majority and another chamber controlled by a Democratic majority, and uh, they might be at odds on what they want done. Um, and then you could have a, a governor um, from you know, either party. And then the, another option could be that uh, you know, the governor has asked the attorney general to represent her and and the legislature then would be left in the cold and uh so it, it's just a there, there's a lot of combinations and and this could be an effective way to deal with a complex situation I, yeah i'm guessing i'm so it has nothing to do with the current administration this is almost like a preemptive measure is that kind of what you're saying that's exactly what it is. Um, it, you know, it, 
it looks forward. And, uh, you know, we did have some laws that were challenged in court uh, this in the past year. Um, the uh, riot boosting laws, some, right. some parts of that were challenged and struck down by a federal judge. And, uh, there, you know, there also was a uh, case that involved a, a, law, a state law that uh, would have banned out-of-state contributions to ballot uh, campaign uh, right. committee. And that was found unconstitutional as well. Yeah. Part of it, yeah. So, yeah. okay, let's talk about the next one you have here. This is uh, HB 1006 legislature created an oversight panel you said a decade ago when the conversion to production-based land values was from market-based land values and so this allows for more sources than sdsu and will also add cow and calf prices so for uh an agricultural industry or agricultural state that we are this is a, a big deal for our farmers it's a huge deal and uh you know what what's what's been happening is uh Property taxes went up on agricultural land as a result of this. Uh, they were horribly undervalued under the old system, which was based on market prices. And uh, and what was happening is that uh, people, uh, counties were having to, to go to other counties just to get comparable data. And uh, and it wasn't fair. Uh, so what, what they decided to do in the legislature was switch over to taxing land based on its production value, you know, its production capability. And that uses soil types. And, uh, and so what, what they've been doing for the last decade is relying on data from South Dakota State University. And this would allow uh, for other sources other than SDSU for that data. And it also bring in uh, cow calf prices, which uh, aren't, aren't currently allowed in state law. All right, I'm going to skip over to the Senate bills now. The uh, Senate Bill 1 is giving law enforcement more ways to communicate when people are seen as potential threats to harming themselves or others. So, you know, mental health has kind of been a priority for, uh, you know, local governments. Sioux Falls seeing that. It's been a priority for um, law enforcement in different areas, too. You know, like I said, Sioux Falls Police has hired a mental health officer. So what is this state... Uh, law doing to allow um, allow with mental health when it comes to harming yourself, but then of course also harming others. What is this doing? Well, this this opens up um, law enforcement to using what I would describe as modern communication methods, um, text, uh, electronic messaging, things like that, and so that people would not have to uh, people would not have to make appearances in local courthouses and so forth. Um, people could do this remotely, uh, and uh, and so it, it's it's just another option, and it's uh, it could save money in in the long run, uh, just in terms of transportation costs and things like that. And moder- modernizing the the current system. Absolutely. The uh, Senate Bill Two you have here is a legislature considering considered a variation of this before, but basically this requires the State Department of Social Services to support. Is this a two one one type system in all counties, like the helpline? That's exactly what this is, and uh, you know, not all counties have it now, and uh, especially rural South Dakota does not have it, and and so you may be accustomed to this in Sioux Falls, but. You know, you may not get it in, in remote parts of South Dakota. And, and so this would put everybody on the same playing field. Yeah, 211 is used for people who don't know. Um, I, I believe a majority of people know, but 211 can be used for a, a, a kind of a variety of things. Mental health is one of them, getting crisis resources. But then there's also just like community resources. We used it in Sioux Falls for even after the tornadoes this summer to coordinate volunteers. So it's kind of like a catch-all for the community, right? Is that kind of right. how other communities use it across the state? Say that again? Is that how other communities use it across the state? They do. Yes, okay. that is how they use it. Yeah. Okay, so uh, next Tuesday, as you said, is the opening of the session, and that begins with the governor's speech, her state of the state address. Uh, she... You, we kind of know a little bit about what she's going to be talking about because she released a little bit in her column. What uh, what are you looking for in this speech? You know, the, the legislature is going to be looking for ways to spend money that 
the governor uh, hasn't recommended. And and so she, you know, she's going to be frugal. The legislators are going to uh, look for money for things such as state employee raises, uh, uh, extra money for uh, Medicaid services providers. Um, and it's uh, that's going to be a major issue this year. The you know the governor is going to look at uh, doing things such as uh, uh, getting money for one-time money for uh, more internet access um, and and also for a major uh, revision of the the uh, oh special education formula um, and and those are all important you know the difficulty we have in South Dakota is that we're sales tax dependent as our major source of revenue and sales tax uh, growth just has not met expectations even uh, even after the internet you know we've got the US Supreme Court to side with South Dakota even after that are they still not seeing the sales tax revenue they need yeah they you know they they just have not and uh, and so you know and we also have a state law that says you're supposed to or the legislature is supposed to give schools uh, the lesser of either a three percent increase or uh, inflation, and the governor has not recommended that, so that'll be another issue to, uh, to be debated. Yeah, so I'm I'm going to pull up here her column uh, so the viewers can see it. But uh, what we're basically seeing is that she is what she's outlining is she's going to look at suicide prevention mental health education habitat and business growth those are kind of like her key priorities for 2020 do what about um is is, do you expect anything to move forward with the whole meth situation given her public campaign is she going to try to get more funding for meth prevention um she is that that'll be that is in the budget already um she outlined her budget in december or her recommendations in december and that did include uh more bed space for meth uh meth addicts if you will people who need help with meth and uh you know whether that's enough you know that's up, up to the legislature to debate but uh you know that's that'll be a what i think the issue there is how far do they want to go and she's sort of set a baseline, and I, I think there will be legislators who want to go beyond what she has uh, advocated to this point. The other issue that is likely going to come up in this session, well, we know it's going to come up, is industrial hemp, as we talked about. What are you seeing with that? Because the, the lawmakers studied this over the summer, as we've been reporting. You went to several of their uh, meetings. Right. What are we looking for in this session? I think you'll see a, a repeat of last year. Uh, the legislature will, the House and the Senate will pass it. Um, no one will veto it. And um, and then the question will come down to whether she still has enough uh, support for her veto in the Senate. That's the House uh, rolled right past her veto last year. And she uh, relied on the Senate to stop it and or to, to uphold the veto. Now and so... I understand. I think you reported that if if they aren't able to do that, they have an alternative bill that will force it onto the ballot in 2020. Is that right? Or that's kind of what we heard. That you know that that's been discussed by uh, both uh, Republicans and Democrats. Um, I don't I don't know how serious that is. There there also now for the ballot are two marijuana legalization measures one for medical marijuana one for full recreational marijuana and uh and Noam has uh, warned that hemp would be the uh, the gateway for marijuana legalization in south dakota and uh so i you know to have a third measure on the ballot with hemp i you know i don't know how that would fit together politically but uh, it would it would give people a, a set of options the other, the other kicker in all of this is that the uh, the legalization, the recreation legalization measure, is a constitutional amendment, which means the legislature could not change it without without putting it on the ballot again in two years, and 
So, so that, that would make it legal possibly for two years, and then all of a sudden it's not? Well, yeah, that that's one part of it. But the other part of it is that it also calls for a 15% tax, and the money would be split between the uh, general fund and K-12 education or K-12 schools. And uh, I, so I don't know how that fits together either. I do believe Illinois... Uh, which just re legalized it recreationally on January 1st. Uh, I believe they also have a 15% tax. Uh, that's kind of that seems to be kind of commonplace. But yeah, it would be interesting. I think uh, if the voters were to pass one or two two of those measures, but hemp doesn't get through, you know, in the legislature, <laughs> that would be yeah. a real conundrum for uh, the administration. I would imagine. Yeah, and the, the other thing on hemp is that we have nine tribes, nine tribal governments. Uh, who have expressed to varying degrees interest in it. And, you know, Flandreau already has. Yeah, they're approved. Yeah. They're approved. I believe Oglala Sioux is uh, pending right now. And then yep. uh, is it Yankton Sioux is the other one that's pending. They've submitted their application. Yeah. So, so we, you know, we would have a, uh, a checkerboard, if you will, in South Dakota. And the other thing is that, uh, you know, reservations, uh, represent a large part of the land base in South Dakota. And then you'd have a question uh, w within those reservations on, you know, what what would non-Indian people be allowed to do? Yeah. And, you know, I think the USDA rules, from what I understand, clarify the whole transportation of it. It can transport between states that make it illegal. Um, the interstate transportation allows it. So, yeah, absolutely. It would be very interesting. Well, what else are you looking for? Anything else that I'm missing? Big things that are going to be coming up that you're looking for next week? Well, you know, one one small thing, but it's going to be a big thing, is the, uh, the, the LRC, the Legislative Research Council, has changed how the bills, the, the, the legislation appears um, on their website. And, uh, and so what's, what's happening this year is the, the bills now that repeal laws only only use the legal code and they don't contain the entire part of the section. They don't contain the entire wording of the law. And so there are some lobbyists who are uh, concerned about that. And then the other, the other big change this year is just how you get into the Capitol. And, oh yeah. Uh, the security, the whole security system has changed there. I saw, I was there uh, a couple months ago and they were getting ready to, make it go live but yeah what what's what if people are coming out to peer for session what can they expect well they, they should come through the uh what i would describe as the back door and uh, which is the no on the north side so it's it's the side of the capitol that does not have the steps if okay. you will okay. and um and so that that will be the only door that is open to the public and then they'll have to go through a uh, a security checkpoint Similar to a federal courthouse, they'll they'll want you to walk through a metal detector, if you will, and uh, and have your bag searched if you if you have a bag, and and you know it, they're hoping it takes you know, fifteen to thirty seconds at most, and right. uh, but you know the the hang up then will be you know if you get behind a, a whole bus of children, exactly because. You know, that's school kids I mean. love to come to the session or, or schools love to send their kids to, to see the legislative session. And, and so that, you know, that'll be a, a little bit of a hassle. Yeah. I'll, t I'll t it's I, just a personal note. I thought it was so interesting when I came to South Dakota that there was no security, uh, at least, you know, entering the building. I'm from Illinois, as I said, where, you know, that's just, it's, it's just fascinating that South Dakota is now, especially in a post 9-11, 11 era is now getting to this point but you know it's important to keep people safe there yeah they're slowly slowly hardening the capital and and we've seen uh some of these changes take place in other state government buildings the capital is the last or one of the last where you can just walk in and uh and now you won't be able to just walk in anymore at the capital either Okay, let's, before we go, let's talk about a little bit about your coverage. I'm going to pull up here, again, the Capitol News Bureau site on Kellan.com. So that's what, uh, if you are watching right now, that's what you see uh, right now. So you file, you're going to be filing a lot of stories throughout session. Tell me a little bit about your process and what viewers can expect. Well, you know, 
what they can expect from me is uh, a combination of stories. Um, the legislature has committee meetings in the mornings and then has what they describe as floor sessions in the afternoons. And uh, in most weeks, those will occur four days of the, of the work week. Um, they'll either take a Monday off or a Friday off, and, and those are all on, online on, on, the, on the calendar. Um, and, uh, and I'll try to be filing uh, you know, stories every day of session and uh, you know, one or two stories out of the committees in the morning and several stories out of the floor action in the afternoon. And, uh, and then also just some you know, enterprise stories throughout the week uh, as well, so. I think the, uh, probably the best location to know what's happening in Pierre is your Twitter feed, which I pulled up here. And I put a, the name down there on the screen, if you can see it, at Pierre Mercer. But you're, you're posting constantly everything that you could ever need to know about what's happening in South Dakota. I try. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, all right, Bob. I uh, appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. I know it is going to be a crazy couple of days for you, so I wish you the best of luck, and uh, let's hope we can make this a regular thing. I look forward to it. <laughs> <laughs>